Hey, welcome to How to Run Starstone M3, and this week is terrible. It is so tough out here. Double silence, fire, and let me tell you, I've ran this all week with random groups, seen some really crazy loadouts, some crazy thing, healers being in heavy gear, all sorts of stuff, man. Um, this was the most difficult dungeon to somewhat get a decent run on, and um, that's what this video is about today, how to run it properly so you can have a better experience than what I had all week. Yesterday was infuriating how many times uh we just uh got destroyed and couldn't get a video going so this group right here you a lot of times with the random group you always want to fight right here up top and you, if you go too far down the stairs you can accidentally aggro the art or the crawlers and archers so apparently i can't speak today but yeah, so you want to pop silence before every engagement in this. This dungeon does not play around. So if you want to fight in silence like the tank went down there and he wanted the extra challenge, go ahead. But then they're going to get spread out like this. It gets a little crazy trying to hold aggro and it just becomes a nightmare. Pop silence before every engagement in this dungeon. Let me tell you, it will make your uh, run so much easier. Mm, as easy as it could be these archers dps you got to go after the archers first there's some times where you can't i get that but you gotta go after the archers first and watch out for the healer the tank will be able to hold the mobs but if those archers start hitting the healer everybody's dead okay it's very important so right here i was saying pop silence i just really wanted a good run after this whole week of just garbage and Man, I am just telling these guys, <laughs> sorry for sounding like an ass, but uh, I'm going to be telling you what to do at every step here. Now, this was my first run of the day, and I'm glad that I got on and had a decent run. That was exciting, because I did not want to go a whole full day again of um, just terrible wives and people quitting and whatnot. The new dungeon, the Glacial Tarn with nature and stuff, I, I, I feel like it was far easier to get gold on than this, if that tells you anything. So the boss fights in that new dungeon are insane. But here we go. All right, you, you got to watch out for this guy. He goes skating every time at the very beginning. So if you're behind him like this guy, boom, if you're behind the tank, you're going to get hit. You got to know that. You got to get ready to block. If you run this enough, you know that it's coming. Try to group these guys up as best you can. Try to stay in the sacred because that fire burns. If you have flame conditioning gear, that could really help you out. But, um, you know, it's hard to get Enchanted Ward and flame conditioning on one piece. If you do, hey, you're going to have a lot easier time. This guy does skate around a lot. We don't have a hammer besides the tank, I believe. And hammer in this dungeon is so important as a DPS. One of the DPS needs to have a hammer. I was the only one that had the great ax, so I needed that. This other DPS has rapier eyes gauntlet, which rapier in silence is usually a no-no because it procs silence so much because the abilities are used so often so fast. So really it would have been better if he would have went hammer Mm, you know blunderbuss that's a great combo for this hammer and blunderbuss and that would have helped with crowd control help with the crawlers stunning the archers it would have been i think way better than the rapier ice gauntlet i would say the perfect you know dps loadout for this would be someone with a spear great axe another person with a great sword you know, even another great axe or a hammer, and the other guy with the hammer blunderbuss. What you could do is get some damage going here. One person, you know, head out early. That's usually what I do. And then you can go and get the gate open. 
but um, I'm gonna go get the star metal first. A lot of times the tanks like to be the one that goes and gets the um, staff to open the bridge and get you through the lasers. So it all depends because the tanks gonna obviously have a lot more armor and these crawlers and this archer don't play. Here's a little shortcut how to get down there a lot easier. That'll save you some time. Oh, look at that. Didn't even register, baby. Now time these crawlers. Once they aggro, it's about two seconds or so before they're going to lunge at you. So try to tie them your dodge. Almost went into the laser. I was like, Tank, where are you going? How did you get there? I said, because I'm a freaking pro. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no, <nope>, Tank. <laughs> and then Tank died out instead of going across and jumping over. He just like fell off for some reason. I don't get it. And then right here, <clears throat> pro stuff right here. Put my hand back down on the mouse and accidentally hit right click and just got destroyed. Bebop! What a noob. So. A lot of times the healer will go ahead and shoot the two crawlers on the other side of the laser and pull them to you. But this group is where you want to pop uh, proc silence every time before you fight the main group. And the tank went ahead without proc and silence, but that's all right. We got it. See, I have aggro on the big guy, so I was trying to work my way around. Tank did a great job of grabbing aggro, aggro back, so I'm trying to focus on where the hell the archer is in this group. And I got zoomed on, bruh. There's the archer. I don't know what I was trying to do right there with the great axe. Well, that fire burns. Look how much that ticks for. Like a thousand or so. Whew. Now right here, after you kill that mob, a lot of times the healer can shoot the archers and crawlers to come down. I think it's an easier way, but some people like to go up, go around this corner. To me, with the silenced um, 
I feel it's easier to go the other way and pull them down. If you come up here and you have silence everywhere, there's not much room to move around. And if you go back too far and you aggro the three dudes behind, you're probably going to get wiped. And this group is just hard to clump up. You got all these crawlers coming in late and then silence hits and it's a problem. See, I got aggro on the archer, so I'm going to go down here and work the line of sight. Don't be afraid to do that. Especially if you can't get your ability off because the silence is just spread out everywhere. I need to roll into the sacred here. There we go. I'm not trying to get the revive too much right here because sometimes fire can randomly hit like that. Best just to go ahead and kill the mob and then freaking get them. Or wait till it's down to one. Alright, I'm gonna throw grab well right here to get the silence to hit on me. I mean, not the silence, the fire. So we're not fighting in it. At least not at first. Watch out for all these crawlers coming in. That's where it gets hectic. You can see how much they're spread out. This is how teams get wiped real easy. Now, I probably should have just kept fighting here, but what I'm thinking here is open the door, get the shrine open. We've already had a few go down. Instead of getting the wipes, open the door, have the tank pull all the enemies to the shrine. We can fight at the shrine. This last thing you want is just a wipe here when you're so close to the shrine. And that's what I end up telling them. Go to the shrine, go to the shrine. This next group, the healer will usually shoot the archers in the back and that way they come down to where the stairs are in front of us. And then you, after you take the archers down, you can fight the rest of the mobs a lot easier. This tank wanted to go up and to the left. So that's what we end up doing. I would not recommend it, but it can work. I should have reaped that guy that's over there by itself. I should have reaped him closer. Gotta keep an eye on the uh, big guy over there because if he does the slam down with the void, it can uh, knock you real easy. Kind of seeing these guys low health over here, so I'm gonna branch off. This is where you're going to put your lost ward nice. coating on and your lost infused uh, coating on your weapons. This boss can be tricky. The slam down uh, can one shot you a lot of times if you're 50 con or less. 
So you got to be careful of that. Also, when he spawns his little uh, minions, you need to try to group them up as best you can so they don't go running after the healer. So me with the great axe has that responsibility right as they spawn, throw the grab well and then maelstrom to try to keep them close, reap them if I need to. And that way he turns around, picks them back up, and then he pukes on the tank instead of uh, those guys just running around, you know, hitting the healer. Man, get your stinky foot out of here, bruh. Now, if you're a great sword user here, it is, um, you know, pretty difficult. So you got to really be cautious of when you're swinging and how you're, you know, swinging that. So spear a lot easier to dodge roll. I'm so lucky I didn't get killed right there. careful with your sweep because if you sweep at the wrong time and he slams down uh, you're gonna get knocked so there's certain movements that he does that I'll use a sweep then like when he throws up you know just be careful when you're using your ability right there would be a good time to sweep This next part, some tanks want to pull the ghost, the big guy, and have them fight right here. But uh, I do think it's best just to run in there, try to group them all together. DPS, you need to watch these uh, archers. And yes, they are archers. They're just like the lost versions. And if you don't, a lot of times they don't get grouped up in the clump. It's pretty difficult unless you have two great axes and you all work together to get them in there. So usually one of your DPS is going to be out here on an island, fight them alone. But I want my healer going down, baby. I love my healers. <laughs> Keep trying to skewer and I'll freaking reap with my great ass because then switch the uh, damn weapon. All right, right here is where I'm looking at the silence meter. Go ahead and proc it before you get in this next engagement. lot of tanks will on a normal run uh, normal expedition without silence they will pull all these enemies to the wall back there and you can take them on just fine but with the silence no nah, and the fire nah you don't want to do that on this one now unless you got a coordinated group and y'all know what you're doing and you got oblivion on the ground and 
freaking elf over here is an AFK. With his bow. first then the big guy don't get the ghost out before you kill this uh, dragon thing the dragon thing this whole time I've always been playing I still don't know the name of this guy You gotta make sure you proc silence before you pull the ghost out. Now you can't fight him on the stairs right there to my right. Tank puts his, you know, back to the wall and it really makes it safe for the DPS because something about the angles make it a little bit easier. But we end up taking him up here on the flat ground, which is fine. Make sure you get your skewer on the ghost often and also the maelstrom. That way you got double weakening. Just try to keep that going, especially with per perforate. I told the healer, hey, I got him. I want the heal to be healing. This guy, I think, gets shrined. I'm not sure. No. Nope. Right here when the silence hits, you just gotta wait for the tank to pull him out. Don't swing with the great axe like a dum dum. Watch out for the lions, trying to get in between them. And just pray. <laughs> Bada bad Jesus. Always look at that silence meter proc it. Top slide. Now this tank does not pull to the shrine, but if you're watching this and you're a tank, always pull to the shrine. Okay, don't just stop here. Because if anybody went down previously to the ghost and they get knocked here, they got you know, they have to go all the way back to the other shrine. I'll show you after we're done fighting where to pull them to. But yeah, don't fight here in the open. It's also really spread out. Not the best place. So I didn't go after the archers this time. Kind of want to show you why you should. See how the healer's running from that archer? That's exactly what happens when you, as DPS, only focus on left clicking on the big mob. Try to help the healer so the healer can help you and the tank right here is where you want to pull them tank you'd put your back to that wall you'll have the whole mob right there on top of you it's awesome it's a great time the dps can take out the archers in the back well, this gets a little bit out of a hand. You got to just try to do your best to keep these grouped together. Really important to take down this big guy about as fast as you can. Because those slams and that vomit, they really take a lot of health down. The archer, sometimes on this fight, I kind of leave him be for a second until that big guy's down. And then I can rotate. So healer, get your dodge on, baby. Collect.
Right here is where you want to put back on your ancient ward pot and ancient infused coatings on the weapons. What I like to do as the tank's going down is throw my grab well to get the fire to pop away from where we will be, but um, looked like that was already done. He went pretty quick, man. Now, as you're DPS in this group, watch out for the guy zooming around because that will knock you a lot of times. Try to do your best. If he jumps back like that, usually it does mean he's about to zoom. There he goes. That's one of the telltale signs. And my role, what I usually do here, as I see him dwindling down, it's just that one guy left that has a lot of health. I'm going to let them deal with it. I think they can. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the laser stuff done. I want to look and see how much health he has. Because if he's about to die, then I don't want to go do this and keep everybody waiting. But he had plenty of health left. They're not going to kill him before I get done with this. Try to, you know, go around that guy. But this is the peaceful part. Let's listen. Yeah, I like that. Then when you get through, you can just drop the staff, disconnect the power, get your mineable, and that way the people can get right through after they grab the key. So, saves you some time. So... I asked him, are we pulling the archers? He no, no, said, no, boss first. boss first. So it might be a thing over here in the EU NISA server where you pull the boss first. Um, I don't like it, but you know, if it works for you, it works for you. A lot of times those crawlers can come over here at the same time and it just gets a mess because the tank's going to be on this back left here and the crawlers are coming how that one is and it's going to jump right on somebody either the healer or the dps in the back and it just gets kind of messy if you pull the archers upstairs first and take them down and then go to the dragon guy you got a lot more ground to fight on man i feel like it's just easier but maybe that's just because i'm used to it either way whatever you can do and get it done get it done Always watch out for that blast because this is a lost enemy, so you don't have any protection. Now you can pull all these to the arches, group them up. This next Where group is, of enemies. Uh, right here, that tank, tank asks if we're gonna fight or skip, and I say always skip. You always skip this group. Never ever fight this group. There's no point, and it's too high risk. That guy has so much health, and those slams hurt, and don't. There's just too many enemies. Nope. Just skip this. You can pull the secret guy at the end, and that will be another named. That way you still have all the named by the end fight. So there's no need to. Every M3 group you run with, they're going to skip that group if they know what they're doing. This is where it gets a little bit hairy. One guy went down, and you skip all these en enemies normally, but the guy went down, I guess, didn't want to shrine and just run back. So we ended up doing what you're not supposed to do and fight them just taking time 
Also, the indecision. Like, are we actually fighting these? Or are we just getting the guy up and then going? Kind of get stuck here with no stamina, so that was scary. Always kill these two archers and try to grab well them the best you can. The tank was starting to go. No, uh-uh. These guys will one-shot people in the back so easily. Got to take them out. If something happens where someone dies and they have to respawn and run back through and you got two archers shooting at nah. Most time, they're going to get shot and killed again. Always skip this mob also. And you're going to go right upstairs. If you're the only one in the group that has a great axe, what I told them was, hey, someone grab the star metal because I have the great axe and I got to group them up. It's going to be very important to get these two archers on the far left, far right, right here together. Try to reap as best you can. Grab well. Watch out for the maelstrom because it pulls you into the group like that too much. Oof. This is where a hammer is needed to stun. See this other DPS uh, grinding with the archer, so I'm gonna help him out. Told him I'm with him. Because we understand. I should have grabbed well him and the other archer together, but after getting. Um, I don't know, I thought I got knocked or something where I didn't want to have another knock and get shrined. I think the tank was shrined here, so it's just up to us to try to survive. Which is fine. These mobs are pretty easy. I was telling the healer, get ready to go ahead and pull the ghost whenever the tank gets back. Some lag going on, baby. Go ahead and throw the grab well to get the fire to spawn on me so we're not fighting in it, at least not for the moment. Always go to the archer first. Whoever picked up the key earlier and turned it in needs to go ahead and get that door open so anybody that went down can touch the shrine and come back and fight. Always go after the Arger first, which I seem to be the only one. Keep an eye on the big guy because if he slams down and you're not paying attention, dead. With the silence going or whatnot, I'm going to go ahead and touch try and come back.
I do mention to the healer to go ahead and go pull the secret boss in the back so he can be coming while we're finishing up on this guy to make things a little bit smoother, faster. And as you run the dungeon more and more, you'll learn those tips and tricks, you know, just how to speed things up. The littlest things can work. Because you can tell we're already almost at time cap. We're just 40 minutes to do the dungeon, so just slow DPS, you know, and silence is going to slow things down also. This final boss is really good to have a slash protection set, at least with um, slash protection amulet. And, um, it, you know, this boss does a lot of slash damage, so you can make a full set if you want. I made partial set. Um, boosted up my con right here, which you didn't need to. I was trying to switch it back at the last second. Like, ah, I don't really need to, but I really wanted to get through this run just cleanly. So, but um, 40 con is just fine if you have slash protection. I think I was 35, 40% slash protected. So even if you got hit with one, it's not going to kill you. I'm going to speed up the boss fight because it's just typical boss fight. But some things to pay attention to is when the boss turns around to throw the bones into the ground to spawn the skeletons, try to stay close. So that way they spawn close and the DPS can take them out. If you're a healer and you're real far away, or if you're a ranged DPS player and you're real far away, it's going to get real spread out and it's going to be hard to keep them off the healer, especially in the second half. Also, whenever the boss reassembles herself and slams down, you can back up, throw a hatchet or any sh you know throwable shootable into the uh, eye and it will stun her so she won't be jumping around anymore. Tank always just try to back up the boss around the arena in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion so we can kind of know where you're going. If you get aggro, get ready to dodge. Hit your map while you're at it, you know, show your true skill. Right here's where I went back and took my food so that way I can do a little bit more damage because the fight was taking a while. Right there's where you want to shoot her in the eye, get her to stun, and there you go. Stay close in so we can take those out. You can always dodge the wave. So just try to time it. The closer you all are together, the easier it is. But yeah, this week's Starstone runs were very difficult. And that double silence and fire, man, it was a monster. So we did not get a gold, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was rough out here in these streets. Maybe you had a better time. Who knows? Anyways, that's uh, how you run that, except for, you know, you want to do it a lot better than what we did. So, uh, if that helped you, let me know in the comments. If you're new here, I'm putting a playlist together on how to run M3s on every dungeon. Usually I get gold on them all, but, uh, you know, this week, man, 
Let me tell you how many hours I put in. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Later.